Well, now that we're unmuted, um, I guess we're ready to get started mm -hmm. here. So today we're going to be talking to you about keeping current with the literature. Um, and I'm Maureen, as ever, and this is Orby. Welcome. Um, so today, we're hoping that by the end of the session, you're going to be able to create an individualized strategy uh, to keep current in your own way, whatever works for you. Um, we hope you'll be able to identify some of the most common ways of keeping current, of keeping up to date in the literature. And we're also going to sort of promote, plug, yeah, plug our own uh, service here, uh, requesting a MyNet current awareness alert, which we can build for you. So we'll talk about some of these in more detail, but before, let's get started and ask, uh, what are your objectives for today's session? And we'd actually like you to respond to this one in the chat box, if possible. Um, so we'll just give you a few minutes, but just what are you hoping to get out of this? Yeah, so is it you're looking for just kind of a general way to stay up to date? Is there a specific thing that you're looking for, like you'd like to utilize an app? Or have you heard about something, um, some great thing, and you'd like to be able to learn more? So you can just type in your message in the chat box. Oh, there we yeah, go. Somebody's responded. A few <laughs> answers are coming in. Okay, up to date with evidence-based programs. Yeah, great. Good, I think our session will help with that. Um, optimize them. Oh, I, great. Uh, accessing your already wonderful service. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and we will talk about that, but also to a certain extent, optimizing the current awareness alert, you'll want to talk with us individually about that just to and uh, newer technology good we've yeah. got a yeah. section on that so it looks like we're uh looks we're like on you track. guys are oh here oh. uh so we'll just introduce ourselves again i'm maureen and and i'm orby dingwall and we are the minet librarians yes yeah. and the one for manitoba health and norby's the one for everything else yeah. so um so in terms of what is MyNet, it's Manitoba's Health Information and Knowledge Network. Um, the K is silent, so it's the H. Um, and we provide library service to healthcare professionals in the province. Um, and besides just us, oops, uh, sorry. Besides just us, there's um, Gail Matheson, who is another MyNet librarian, and Cheryl Haas, who is the library assistant? She's the one you talk to if you're ever getting document delivery or setting up a library card. Um, so the services we provide, we will do literature searches on request on any topic that you're interested in learning about. Uh, we do document delivery, so anything that we found in the lit search, anything that's behind a paywall, uh, don't pay for it. Email us or give us a call or whatever, and uh, we'll send it right to you. The current awareness alerts, which we will be talking about in more detail yeah. um, during this presentation, and training, education, and orientation sessions like the one we have here. Uh, we can do customized ones. We can do them really any length, 10 minutes, an hour. Yeah, and just on that note, we have some more sessions coming up. They're all mm -hmm. list. They're monthly. They're listed, except this month, where we thought uh, people would want to really be getting on top of things with their New Year's resolutions. So we have two this month, um, and then one a month um, scheduled until April. But like Maureen mentioned, if you have a group of people or you as an individual have um, a need for some kind of session, we're happy to either do one of the ones that we've already done or to custom create a session for you. Yeah, don't be shy, send us an email. Um, so in terms of what we provide, we provide you access to library resources, but unfortunately we can't give you um, database access on your own. So you have to- To the University of Manitoba. To the University of Manitoba's databases like Medline, and that sort of thing. But you can email us and we have access to it and then you have access to the resources in that through us, through the document delivery. Um, and we will do searches for you in all those databases as well. Um, but you do have access to UpToDate, which is a point of care um, tool. tool, database, app, um, that allows you to learn about various medical topics and remain up to date, which is the topic of this presentation. 
Um, so let's do another poll here, uh, which we've sort of just realized now that we've I forgotten didn't, to set up I didn't pre-set them poll. up. Oh, but fail. that's okay. Um, if you guys could answer in the chat instead, uh, when you're thinking about keeping current with the literature, do you feel more like you don't know where to start, so number one, or that you get so many alerts that you can't get through them all, or number two, or are you happy with the mechanisms that you have in place and just want some some extra tips and pointers? And I think we've got some responses here. So number one, don't know where to start. Yeah. Okay, so you can just enter numbers one, two, or three okay. into the chat box. Looks like some of you aren't sure where to begin. Some of you are you have some extra, you're hoping for some extra strategies. Oh, and some of you are here for all of this. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. Uh, I think, I hope that we'll be able to help all of you with this. Yeah. Um, so let's just move forward here. Um, there is a lot of information out there on the internet and there are a lot of different ways to access that material and to stay up to date. Um, and so if you don't know where to begin, well, We'll help you with that, but um, before we do that, we'd like to get a sense of uh, what strategies are you guys currently using to stay up to date on the literature uh, in your area or stay up to speed. Um, and again, if you could just respond in the chat box to this one, we'll give you a few minutes. Yeah, and this could be anything from you read uh, you know, the print newspaper every morning to you get our current awareness or you follow Twitter or, you, you know. have a regular conference with your colleagues about mm -hmm. what's going on, so. Or you get email updates. Okay, subscriptions to things like The Lancet. That's good, yeah. Good. Um, Even if you, and if you don't have anything you feel is effective, um, you can just write that in too. Yeah. Okay. And so some of you, it looks like you're building your searches sort of as you go. So an as you need sort of set up um, alerts that you've set up. That's good. And yeah, and just general media, yeah. some favorite journals, and the need for more. <laughs> that's good. Perfect. Excellent. So that's why you're here. Um, in terms of what today's key messages are, um, like this is sort of a spoiler for the end, but we're going to be talking about the fact that what, how to keep current is personal. Like what works for you won't necessarily work for, for me, for example. Yeah. And um, we don't want to try to sell you on any one mm -hmm. specific strategy because they're all good. They all have advantages and disadvantages mm -hmm. and they're all hugely unique. Like some people love getting email. And some people need to only move away from email. Yes. Or and every variation in between. So we re that's why we are giving you the spoiler and message um, now uh, is so that you don't feel like oh gosh I have to try each of these. Like if you hear you something, so that you point to don't get overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> um, if something doesn't work, uh, don't worry about it. Don't and if something it. does, keep using it, even if it seems like. You know, even if you're like, oh, am I so outdated reading the newspaper? Well, if the newspaper works for you, keep using it. Mm -hmm. um, and then point three sort of related to that, don't be afraid to skim quickly and move on. Um, this doesn't need to be a, a dedicated two hour block of time every day. Um, keeping current is just about really being aware of what's out there and, and figuring out how to use that in your own practice, mm -hmm. in your own habits. Um, so in terms of our current awareness alert, this is the service that we set up where you can build a custom, you can contact us and we will build a customized search for you that will then send you weekly updates. Um, it can be for a specific journal, it can be for a specific topic, or it can be for a specific author or set of authors. Um, and the topic can be as broad or as narrow as you would ask for any literature search. Yeah. And so we've had people and they say, you know what, I have these four favorite journals. I just want to get the table of contents from them. Mm -hmm. And we've had other people say, listen, I only work in an area with these kinds of patients 
and there is no journal for those kinds of patients, journal of that. Um, and so we create a subject alert in that case, or just the journal alert and often variations in between. Yeah, and so um, I guess we covered uh, any, so then you'll get this email and uh, you can request full text articles from us. It'll just give you a list with the title and the abstract in there. And we can edit your alert if you're finding that it's not exactly what you're looking for, or we've had some people, they've changed their area of employment and they're like, well, I no longer need this search, but I still need, but I need this one now, or, or this needs to change slightly because my patients or the people that I'm mm -hmm. looking at have moved from this category to this category. Um, and we're happy to edit at any time. Uh, we've just got a question. Is yeah, I thought we'd come talk okay. about that in the advantages. And okay, advantages. so we will talk about one of the questions shortly. Oh, thank you. Um, so in terms of what signing up for it looks like, you can go to the MyNet website, mynet.ca, and there's a sign up for a current awareness alert button. And you'll be taken to this form where you can highlight uh, these are some common journals that we search for. I keep pointing at the screen so you can see that I'm pointing in that direction, um, but hopefully you can figure out that that's what I'm pointing at. Um, we can also do custom searches, as we say, so you would just write that into here and say, this is what I'm looking for, or into an email. Uh, you don't necessarily need to fill out the form in detail, um, though it is handy if you're looking for those specific journals. We can certainly uh, sign you up for alerts to other journals though too. Yeah, so if you had a question like, I am working in the area of health promotion and could you look and see if there are journals on health promotion, we will definitely do that. Mm -hmm. And in terms of what the emails look like, here's a sample of them here. You can see the title and the abstracts. Uh, we can also do a version that doesn't have the abstract, which we've had some requests for. Um, if you're interested in a version that doesn't have the abstract, just send us, just note that in the email, because um, we default to the abstract. But there are some advantages and some disadvantages to this. I mean, the advantages are great. We've already been talking about them. <laughs> the disadvantages, though, um, it is reliant on what's in PubMed. Um, so not all journals are included, unfortunately. Um, and some things are embargoed. They don't hit PubMed for a little while, or they're, they don't show up when they're brand new. Um, but it's easy to request. It's easy to set up. Um, there's a lot of stuff in PubMed. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, a lot, and it's, um, you know, they're academic journal mm -hmm. listings that have uh, gone through peer review, and so it's, to some extent, you can trust the quality of the evidence that's available. But always assess <laughs> individual article. Um, and I will pass this over to Orphi now. So like Maureen mentioned, um, not all journals are indexed in PubMed. So in health librarianship, for example, one of our... Um, our, our top Canadian Health Libraries journal is not indexed in PubMed. So I then create an alert directly with the journal. And you can do this as well, uh, because some journals offer a free email alert service. Um, you can't always click directly through to the full text, but that's okay because you would just uh, forward it on to us and say, Hey, Orby, Maureen, and Cheryl, I would like this article listed from like this alert. not pay $80 Yeah, do never pay the $80. Um, that is all covered through us. And um, if you need help identifying journals in your area or identifying journals that have these features, uh, we can definitely help with that. Because even when I was finding, trying to find an example for our next slide here, it was taking me forever to find a nice one that just had um, I know the text is a little bit small, but this is the homepage of the Journal of Dental Education. And on the right hand side, where there's a red circle, it says email alerts. So this one is very clear. Other journals, not so clear. Um, so if you're just finding like, hey, I have this journal, I want to get updated when there's new content in it, you can just send it our way and we can help you find um, the best way to get updated. And there are a few journals, unfortunately, where they won't send out alerts, period. Yeah. Um. Uh, and so this is what an email looks like from one of the journals that I get. And very similar to the ones that we send through our service. Um, 
you know, some information about the journal and then the title, the author and uh, the date. Uh, so advantages and disadvantages, we've kind of spoiled them a little bit. Um, the disadvantage is, or the advantage is, is that as soon as a journal comes out with content, they send these updates. So if it's really important for you to know when there's a new article in this from this journal, this is really helpful. And you can also already vet uh, the journal. That's not to say that the article is going to be exactly what you need or that there's not going to be problems in that article, but you know that this is coming from a high quality source. The disadvantages is, are if you have uh, 20 favorite journals and you get individual alerts from each of them, that that can get quite overwhelming in your inbox. Um, and also sometimes the journals are not always limited to only their journal content. Sometimes they'll send you daily information about all kinds of other things, conferences, workshops, um, uh, trends in the area, uh, or in that subject area. Staffing announcements. Staffing announcements, all kinds of things. So sometimes it is not worthwhile to subscribe to that feed because, you know, it's 98% noise and only 2% valuable journal content. Um, but the only way you can assess whether it's going to be like that or not is to give it a try. And so again, going back to our spoilers is just try it. Uh, if it's working, stick with it. If it's overwhelming, then um, unsubscribe from it. And uh, journal alerts are not always freely available. Sometimes you have to be a subscriber to the journal or be part of the association that puts out the journal. So again, it's really, um, really specific to your uh, individual subject area and to your preferences. Now, speaking of associations, um, there's a bunch of different associations or companies or institutes um, that offer free email alerts from their websites. Again, sometimes that can be kind of hard to find. Uh, so if you've got a favorite association, um, let us know and we can uh, help you navigate whether they've got um, a free service that you can subscribe to. And some associations also offer email listservs. Definitely librarians offer this. This seems to be obsessively, obsessively a librarian thing. Um, but other places do too. Some people just call it a email, an email list is sometimes what it is. Um, and so anyway, if you've got like, if there, if you are working, let's say in diabetes and you want to see if Canadian Diabetes Association has a professional update, that would be a definite thing to do. Now that's going to work for some people that have a nicely defined subject area and for other people, um, that's not going to work. So just keep that in mind. If there, if you do have a favorite association or company or something, um, they may, uh, offer a nice newsletter service. So I subscribe to one from the Canadian Patient Safety Institute. Uh, and this is one of those ones that um, are good for skimming. So sometimes I'll pull this up and I'll can just like really quickly look at it and say, oh, they're just advertising some workshops. I'm not really interested. And I hit delete. And sometimes I don't even read it. I just delete it. And other times um, then I'm, I'm triggered by something and say, oh, I wonder what they're doing for this. Or I definitely want to read that report or whatever it might be. So some of the advantages and disadvantages are similar to the journal alerts, is that this is a great way to get informed directly from the source. And these alerts often promote gray literature, like reports or events and conferences and workshops um, that you may not otherwise be able to find out about. Um, so that's really great. And the, that can be, sorry, really useful for things that are brand new in the field mm -hmm. that haven't had a chance to be published yet. Yeah. Um, new areas of discussion, new areas of, of research. Yeah, even calls for working group members mm -hmm. um, would let you know that different places are working on different initiatives. So that can just be helpful to have that on your radar. Uh, so the disadvantages, again, if you've got 20 favorite associations, then you'll be getting 20 different sets of alerts. Um, and again, they're not always limited to the content that's relevant to you. And so that's up to you or not. Um, if you need every single message to be of interest, then you'll have to assess that. But if you're okay with deleting 20 and keeping one, that's fine too. Um, and again, they're not always available and they're not always freely available. Sometimes again, you have to be members of an association. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there'll be like free versions and mm -hmm. 
non free versions that have more detail and more opportunities. And not that it's a disadvantage to have to pay for something. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes you're already a member or it might be extra incentive to be a member. It's always, um, you know, that's just at your discretion. Uh, so listservs and mailing lists, we touched on this a little bit. Uh, you might know them uh, as a listserv or you might know them also on, just think about, um, you know, in your workplace, if there's a, uh, you know, the message that everybody gets, um, you know, the groups of all staff versus the all payroll staff or just the managers. Um, that's kind of the essence of what a listserv is. Uh, sometimes they're used only to push out information. So we're having an event, come to it, the end. Um, sometimes they might be more of a discussion forum. So again, in libraries, we've got, um, you know, I was reading a bunch um, this morning and they were, you know, I'm having trouble searching on this concept. Can anyone help me out? And then people can then, uh, Maureen could then respond and say, hey, have you checked out this site and that site? They have resources like that. Mm -hmm. Have you tried this term or that term? So um, again, just it depends on um, what's available. Uh, and so the advantages and disadvantages of listservs pretty much uh, is that they're not always available um, and they're not always authoritative information. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. people are making recommendations and they're not really actually helpful. Uh, so that just takes a little bit of getting used to. You tend to get to know the different people who are posting, whether they're... Sometimes you wish you didn't. <laughs> sometimes, yeah, sometimes you didn't wish you. Um, and sometimes they can be an overwhelming amount of traffic. Uh, the advantage is, is that it, you can really stay informed on, um, with a particular group. And it's really great to help building a network. So you can get to know people from all over the world. Uh, and often you can choose whether you're getting the alerts, you know, in real time or daily or weekly. So there are um, some options available to you. All right, so I'm going to be talking about another form of alert. These ones are Google alerts. So like the searches, like the current awareness alerts where we can build a customized search for you, um, you can build a search in Google and uh, you can, every time it updates or weekly when it updates, it can send you an alert about it. Um, the Google alerts are really good for non-academic topics. Um, if there's a fast-breaking topic, let's say there's an epidemic and you need to be hearing everything about this epidemic in relation to Manitoba, uh, even if it's not, you know, any news sources, any sort of uh, chatter about it and this sort of thing, you can set that up. Um, and then I would recommend not holding on to the alert forever in that case, mm -hmm. deleting it after. Um, you can also set up alerts for people, so for yourselves or for somebody whose work you want to follow, uh, for your organization or your department, or again, an organization or department that you would like to follow. How to set one up? You can go to um, this address here, google.ca slash alerts, and you can see that they've got at the bottom alert suggestions. So those are pre-built alerts um, that to me personally, they don't look super uh, useful. So you're, you're not a Toronto Blue Jays fan? Uh, <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> make anybody who's watching angry yeah. about how I don't really watch baseball. Um, but you can also create your own alert in the search bar at the top there. Um, and that can be as complicated or as simple as you need. With Google itself, I would recommend building at least a marginally complicated search so you're not overwhelmed with noise. Like, for instance, if you put in a search for dinosaurs and you said, I want an alert every time that somebody posts on the internet about dinosaurs, you would have millions and millions and millions of results in your inbox. Mm -hmm. um, whereas if you do something more specific, uh, dinosaurs from this specific dig site in the Gobi Desert, like, then that would be a much narrower and more useful results field. Yeah, and sort of like bed bugs versus bed bugs and maybe a specific address. If you, you know, mm -hmm. were providing home care to a specific address and you were yeah. kind of wanting to watch the news on it or um, even to a specific region, yeah. that that might be helpful. Yes, something more relevant to health than dining. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and again, we're not gonna, you know, um, keeping current is important, not just in your professional life, but in personal life too. Mm -hmm. um, and so these are definitely strategies that you can use at home or 
um, you know, there's always all kinds of, of crossovers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, oh, I guess it's just got the points at Creature and Custom Alert. Um, you can use these tools that they have here for uh, mod for changing, modifying how you uh, do your alerts. So, in this case, they've got at most once a day. So, again, you're not getting overwhelmed, but it can also be weekly or every time there's an update. Um, you can limit to a region. I'm not sure how effective the region one would be. I yeah, it's just by country. Really. Yeah, but I suspect it's based on where the website is hosted, which is not always mm -hmm. useful. Um, a site that's about Canada isn't always hosted on a server that's in Canada. Um, and then they can have only the best results or it can be everything. Um, the best results would be using Google's relevancy ranking, which is not, uh, it's not exactly clear what goes into their algorithm. That's a, a corporate secret. So best. Well, depending on what you're looking yeah. for, do you absolutely have to know everything about it? Uh, in some cases you do. And other times um, you just want to get a sense of what's going on. So then the the, yeah, the best results might be okay. Yeah, and so they've got a deliver to, and they you can put in your email address. Now you can do this without signing in to Google itself. Uh, like if you have a Gmail account or a Google account of any sort, um, you could also sign in. And we would recommend doing that because if you sign in to Google when you create the alert, then you can come back and edit it later or delete it later. Um, whereas if you do it this way, where you just put in your email address and don't have a login for it, um, you can't modify it and mm -hmm. it may be difficult to delete. <laughs> uh, which in terms of avoiding getting overwhelmed, being yeah. able to delete something would be a wonderful idea. And you can see here it's asking if it, um, so this is uh, something that I did a screenshot from. Um, it's saying, do you want it to deliver to um, Orby's Gmail address? And so I might not want it to. I might want it to deliver to my Humanitoba address. Mm -hmm. And you can set that up. So even though you've logged in with your personal Gmail, you can have it sent to your work email. Mm -hmm. um, you can also create alerts in Google Scholar. It's a little bit more straightforward. So if you go to the googlescholar.ca, you just build a search like you normally would. And when you start seeing results that are exactly what you need, um, then you go down to the bottom of the screen and you can see we've circled in red there the create alert. And so it just, that search that you just did, it just keeps searching it for you and sending it out to you as frequently as you request. Um, I have a couple set up on different topics in Google Scholar uh, that every time they update, I get a notification about it and it is tremendously useful for staying up to date on your uh, research topics, especially if it's kind of a niche research topic that there's not a lot of information published on. Um, so, and again, if you get an alert about something that you want in uh, Google Scholar, a lot of it won't be freely available, but just email us and we will, we will get you a copy at no cost to you. Um, and we're going to be doing the Googling for Good Evidence online session again soon on the 24th, yeah, I think. Wednesday. Um, so you can learn more about how to construct a good Google search and therefore a good Google alert. But here are some quick tips. Um, you should use quotation marks for exact phrasing. So Zika, Zika virus, virus yeah. for example. But if you searched it without the quotes, it would look for both Zika and virus. And if somebody's last name is Zika, and they're talking about having a Ebola. Yeah. Then Not going to be helpful at that <laughs> in your search results, though. Um, when you're building your search, the first word that you search for in Google is the most important word. And then it just most important to least important is how you should order your words, basically. Um, you want to omit non-essential terms like how do I, where is, that sort of thing. Um, so don't ask questions, just write answers. Think of you're on Jeopardy. <laughs> um, and uh, you want to use whatever term is most relevant. So a medical term like myocardial infarction versus a layman's term like heart attack. Um, which term you use is more is depending you, on what you're depending on for. what you're looking for. If you're looking for what your patients are going to be seeing, by all means use the, the layman's term. But if you're using if you're wanting medical information, use medical terminology. 
Um, and you can also use a minus sign to exclude words that you don't want. So if you put like a, a little minus sign right before a term, um, there's an example here, nursing minus breastfeeding. So you're only getting nursing stuff about nursing, not about breastfeeding, um, that sort of nursing. Mm -hmm. This is me. This is me. Okay, so, but anything that you get, especially from Google Alerts, um, even from the Google Scholar Alerts, but especially, I'm just noticing it's really dark in here. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> such, it's quite... such a gray day. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I, um, anyways, sorry that we're so. Do you want me to try to turn a light out? Uh, I think it's the background light, oh, so if you could I'll close the window. Oh, but okay. anyways, um, whatever you get, you want to critically appraise it. So we like to use yeah. the craft test. Pay attention to the currency, reliability, authority, and the purpose and point of view of what you're looking at. So how recent is it? Is it recent enough for your personal use? Um, in some fields, it'll be more important that it's a brand new topic. And in some fields, it'll be less important. You could be using stuff from 10 years ago, and that's fine. Um, how reliable is the source? So um, is it, you know, does it have a solid methodology? Is the study well conducted? Um, there's also the question of authority. Who's putting this out? What credentials do they have? And then the purpose and point of view. Why are they putting this out? Is it a propaganda piece, or are they actually just trying to put out information there for the public good? Um, and particularly with the Google Alerts, that's fine, Arby. it's uh, it's lighter now. Um, particularly if you're getting news reports about medical topics or about science topics, um, these sources are often not reported well. Um, occasionally, you'll get things where they're they're saying that the findings are this, when in reality the findings are this, or what they're talking about is a very small part of the study. Yeah, so the, those are those things like, oh my goodness, it's so healthy to eat chocolate. Yeah. And then you go into, and when you actually find the result, then it turns out, well, this was a study done in mice. Yeah. And and we all know that you can't generalize at that yeah. level that mice, or it know, had, you know, a sample size of six people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, an unsound methodology. So always go to the primary source, always go to the original article and read that. Don't just rely on the news to tell you the truth. And we always find that um, some of the hardest searches we do are looking in those news articles and then actually finding the study that they're reporting on. So if you are in that instance, or you know, even if it is a straightforward one um, and you're just a little short on time, that's our job to do, to find it for you. So just send us the news alert and say like, hey, which study are they talking about here? I'd like the full text of that. We can absolutely do that for you. Mm -hmm. For sure. And uh, so as I said, we will have our Googling for Good Evidence session. So feel free to join us on the 24th, right back here in Orvi's office. <laughs> um, and in terms of what are the advantages and disadvantages of Google Alerts, well, it searches the entire internet, not just, well, the entire findable internet, not the dark web. Um, and uh, so not just sources you previously knew about, um, and you can receive alerts in real time, which can be extremely useful if it's a hot topic or a, a one where there's brand new news. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the alerts are only as good as a search strategy you can, uh, you can uh, construct Thank you. Um, so you could still be missing things if your search strategy isn't isn't capturing all of it. Um, and anything that you get in it, you really do need to critically assess, uh, which you should be doing with all your sources, but particularly with uh, the material pulled off of Google, and particularly Google more than Google Scholar, though you should do it with Google Scholar too. Just critically assess. Just always do that. Um, and. Uh, Okay, we will talk about blogs. Is that me or you? It's, I actually have an older version of the slide. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> well, why don't I talk about blogs for a minute? Okay. Uh, blogs come in all shapes and sizes. 
Uh, they can be everything from, you know, what someone wore all day every day uh, to a critical analysis of highly scientific theories. So sometimes we've heard at conferences how, you know, um, some mathematician or physicist or somebody wrote kind of like a theory piece on a blog and then a whole, the international community then engaged in a conversation um, in the blog and sometimes then it has led to really great findings. Uh, or then a really great study of research, and other times um, they've hashed out uh, almost in real time um, uh, that no, that's not a valid theory. Mm -hmm. uh, so they can blogs can serve as discussion forums or provide a space for regular columns. Um, so there's all there's just like if you can think up something that you would like to know about, there is a blog on that. Uh, and they often, but not always, have features to send you alerts when there's new content, so that's helpful. So I provided an example here, um, Dr. Postal here at the university, um, he has postal notes, he also had them when he was at the WRHA, uh, and they, you know, it's news and views from the dean, so there's things like that. One that I really subscribe to, it looks, I've, you know, I, when I pulled up the screenshot, I realized that I don't think I had ever gone to the blog site. I just get the email alerts, but I always read them. I didn't realize it looked quite so basic. Um, and this is a health librarian from the US and she just writes an amazing blog. And sometimes I read through it and I think like, oh yeah, I also feel the same way about all those things. And this is totally my perspective. I'm just gonna flag this in case I ever need to have a write up about this topic. Um, and other times she's writing about, uh, you know, she's reviewing different um, products. She's talking about different issues and trends going on. Um, so it's, uh, it's, a really, it's a really great one. So advantages and disadvantages. Disadvantages is sometimes these things are hard to find um, and sometimes they can be hard to receive updates on. And, I don't know, a current awareness strategy that does not work for me is just like remembering to go and check mm -hmm. these places. Some people are really good at somehow doing that. Uh, that's not something <laughs> that's worked for me. And and so I commend those of you who it works for. That's just not uh, my style, which is totally fine. Um, and the disadvantages, these are opinion based. So as long as you're critically appraising them um, and using them in a way for what they are, uh, that's not a problem and they're also not peer-reviewed so if you're just you know sometimes it's just nice to hear somebody or to hear to hear them write about <laughs> to read what they're writing about um, a certain topic uh, and just have kind of a certain perspective um, is great the advantages is there's no publishing delay as soon as they're written they're posted uh, and that they can be sneak peeks to more formal publications mm -hmm. so they might be hey we've been um, let us tell you a little bit conceptually about what we've been up to with this client group um, and stay tuned because we're going to be, you know, writing paper and presenting on these findings. But if you can't join us, um, this is, uh, you know, here's, here's some of what we've been finding. They're also easy to read. So if you're like exhausted uh, at the end of the day or even during the day, um, they're not, you know, they're usually not too lengthy and they're informal language, so they're really accessible. Um, and again, they can be a forum for discussion and comments. Yeah. Um, now, we've been telling you about all these different sorts of alerts where you can get alerts to journals and blogs and Google and blah, blah, blah. You blah, can blah. get more email and more email um, and more email. Be this and rising more. tide of horrifying uh, inbox cluttering email as we've got this poor little man in a boat. Um, so what happens if you're getting too many emails? Well, unsubscribe from the ones that are not of high value. So if you keep finding that you're deleting these ones from X organization every time and maybe like once every two months or something useful in there, well, you know, balance it out. Is it, are you even looking at it enough to find the thing, the, the little gemstone of use in there? And if not, just delete it. Um, or you can change the frequency. For instance, those Google alerts where you could be getting them every time there's an update. Well, maybe it would be better to be getting weekly updates. Um, and another thing to consider is, are there ways to finagle your setup so that you can get less emails? So could you be receiving the alert less often? Is there, if it's a journal alert, are you subscribing to only the articles or is there an option to turn off the editorials, the newsletters, the 
all that other stuff. All the other stuff that comes along with a journal alert. And in some cases, the answer is yes. And in some cases, the answer is no. And then you need to think about, well, do I need this journal alert? Do I want this journal alert? Um, we sort of recommend when you're trying something out, first of all, try it out one at a time, one strategy at a time, see if it works. And if it doesn't, just leave it behind. Um, maybe don't try them all at once because then there's potential to be like, okay, it turns out I hate current awareness alerts yeah. altogether. Any sort of current awareness alert, I don't want that. I don't want that. Um, when in reality, it might just be one or two organizations that were sending you too many or that you signed up for too many. But if you had just one or two, it would be super useful to you. Um, you can also create rules within your mailbox. Manitoba Health uses Outlook. Um, other places we use Outlook here. Um, you can still create rules in Gmail and things like that as well. Um, you can send emails to certain folders. You can say email with this subject line just goes straight into the garbage. Emails from this person go straight into the garbage. <laughs> if there's somebody, for instance, on a listserv who every opinion they have is terrible and you never want to read it and they talk a lot, you can just be like, anytime this person's name is mentioned, it goes into the garbage. Um, and so anything that you don't want is deleted. Um, and yeah, again, permission to skim. So you don't have to read these in great detail. Um, I know it sounds weird to say, like, we give you permission, but it's one of those things people can get really worried about, like, but this is a professional communication. I should be reading it in detail. No. Or even, you know, when you get back from holidays, mm -hmm. if you've been gone for a couple weeks um, and you get back and there's just all these alerts and you think, oh my gosh, I'm never, you know, even my most valuable alerts, sometimes it's okay just to delete them yeah. and get rid of that baggage and just move on forward. Yeah. Yeah. And if it really was super important, odds are you will hear about it somewhere else. Yeah. Um, all right, so just some different tips. I already talked about trying one strategy at a time. Uh, it's also not a bad idea to set a period to try something, maybe a week, maybe a month. Um, see if it's useful. And again, if it's not, just get do it, uh, get rid of it. Or, or you can ask somebody for help, uh, maybe us, maybe one of your colleagues. Yeah, and I, you know, there's a few people and they always seem to know like be in the know. And so sometimes they'll say like, where did you hear about that? Or like, it is 8.05 in the morning. Like that just came, how did you, how are you already up on that? Um, and sometimes, you know, it might be a great messaging that they get or they might tell you about a podcast or mm -hmm. the radio station they listen to or whatever magic that they, or yeah. that they never just sleep. They just watch news all night. Um, yeah, so just talk to people who are always informed on things. Mm -hmm. Find out what their strategies are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so now I will pass it over to Orvi to talk about strategies besides email. Yeah, so um, I think I opened with like, you know, not everybody, not everybody's dying for more email, believe it or not. And then we spent a whole bunch of time, half an hour, talking, talking about, about email. Um, uh, and I, I mean, I say that jokingly because I know that, you know, a lot of organizations uh, here in Manitoba are still quite focused on uh, the workplace email. Um, but you can also, there's also some apps. Uh, and these apps for your smartphones, they serve a specific purpose. So if they don't serve your purpose, then don't even download the app or just delete the app. And again, don't worry about it. Don't look back. Um, and we do have an app, a dedicated app session um, coming up on February 6th at Manitoba Health. And on Valentine's Day. Uh, what a romantic time. So romantic. Apps. Yeah. Uh, um, here online. So we have two apps that we really like uh, in health libraries um, that focus on content from journals. One is called Browsing and the other is Read by QXMD. And we will be sending out the slides after so then you can kind of take a look through these different things. But in the case of apps, these apps are both free. Um, you might as well just download them and give them a try if you're looking for a non-email solution uh, to stay current with your journals. Uh, so browsing is also available in a desktop version, so browsing.com. And what happens, it's basically just a, an online place that has a bunch of um, uh, 
tables of contents from different journals. So it's great if the journal that you want is in browsing and not relevant if the journal that you want is not in there. So uh, both browsing and read by QXMD will ask you if you're part of a library. And in this case, you're not because you don't have electronic access to the U of M's collection. Unless you have a null appointment. Unless you have a null appointment, yeah, or are a student. And in that case, definitely put it in. Mm -hmm. um, so in browsing, you can just say, I only want things that are open access or that are freely available. Uh, but only the open access journals will display. So again, that's great if your journal is open access, but if your journal is not, then this isn't, uh, this isn't going to be helpful for that. So just to take a look at what it looks like, um, browsing displays things in a bookshelf. So I popped in two of the journals that I like, the Journal of Medical Library Association and Evidence-Based Library and Information Science Journal. Both are and you can rename those bookcases and shelves as you need. Oh, okay. So I could do one like Health Libraries Journal. The next one might be like Occupational Therapy yeah. Journals. And then yeah. the next one would be, you know, some other kind of topic journal or, um, yeah. Uh, and so then if I, I clicked here on the Journal of the Medical Library Association and it shows me in the middle the content from the current issue and on the left-hand side, then it lists the different volumes and issues. So um, it sends you alerts as there's new content published, so that's helpful. Then you can just quickly skim the table of contents. And then I clicked into one of the articles and it took me to the website of the, um, of the journal. And then from here, I could download the full text. Uh, so browsing is similar. Um, it's available in your app store. And, um, or sorry, this is the app for browsing. And it looks kind of the same. And once you have one login, it's the same whether you go on your desktop or on your app. And these are just kind of some quick screenshots of what it looks like. So very similar, but just kind of that more mobile um, look to it. And here's a um, snapshot of the full article. Uh, and then read by QXMD. This is what it looks like on the desktop. So same thing, you create an account and then um, you can have it on your smartphone or on your desktop or both. And uh, when you create your account here, you just leave your institution blank, unless again, you're a student or have an appointment with the university. Um, and then it will still show you all the content. Um, so you can choose a specialty to follow, or you can choose a journal collection to follow. So um, one of the uh, collections here is, is the New England Journal of Medicine's health policy and reform. So this is a collection that um, has been created on that, uh, you know, New England Journal of Medicine's um, health policy and reforms. Uh, you can also select specific journals to follow, or you can type in keywords. So there's a bunch of different options to customize here that are nice. And then this is kind of, now you don't like the display. This is the one you, you don't like yeah, the display. Yeah, I don't like how it looks. Yeah, Maureen is not a fan of how it looks. Um, it did. It's still taking me a little bit of a while to kind of, um, you know, figure out the different tabs at the top and then kind of what exactly it's displaying to me. So again, just, you know, goof around with it for a little while um, or start, start small, start with one favorite journal, kind of get a sense of how it's going. Um, and then I had followed some journals. Uh, this is in the app, so it shows me that. And just again, clicking through to one of the articles. This is one, how is this the one? Oh, this is a, a free one. So I could, I was very surprised actually how many, I was trying to find one that was not freely available. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to find one, um, yeah, so I kept clicking to see if it would give me any kind of error and it just like was downloading them so quickly. It was really impressive how fast it was. Uh, so here it took me right through to a full full text article. Um, but here was finally one um, that said that was not available for free. And then it just says, do you have library access? Um, you can, add, you know, it prompts you to this. So if you get to the screen, 
then you just say cancel and then you pop us a message and say, hey, I want this article um, and I don't want to pay for it and we will send it to you. So advantages and disadvantages of these apps. Um, a disadvantage, I know that many people still have government issued or workplace issued Blackberries and there are not many apps available for Blackberry. Um, sometimes to the uh, smartphones are that real blur of work and home and some people are okay with that and some people like to keep them completely separate so at your discretion um, and also you may need multiple apps to cover all the journals of choice that you have uh, and so that is just what it is so again you know maybe all the journals that you want are in one app then that's great but if they're not, then you want to think about, do I want to have two apps? Do I want to go to a different email option? What do I want to do? Um, the advantages, though, are that, again, this is information shared in real time. Uh, so as soon as these things are published, they're on the app. And um, uh, that there are, are those the right advantage? I feel like we might need to update this slide. Um, that... Uh, uh, again, the content here in these journals is really of high quality. Now, very quickly on social media. Social media is also um, a really great way to stay informed, particularly with Twitter and Facebook. They're great ways to stay connected um, uh, with associations, institutions, people you've met at conferences or that have your job in a different province. Uh, but two reminders. Always, like Maureen said earlier, always be critically appraising because there's definitely lots of opportunity for um, the non-authoritative sources to be coming in uh, via Twitter and Facebook. And always be so wary of the comments. Now, I mean, sometimes depending on what you're doing, if you're doing research about how are people feeling about this program that we've been offering in the community, you definitely need to be reading those comments. Um, but if it's about vaccines maybe you don't need to be reading those yeah, comments and just an extra note on that also there's potential to get into fights yeah. on these platforms <laughs> uh try not to do that <laughs> especially if you're trying to be professional um and then there is linkedin which is a great way to stay connected with professionals um especially professionals where uh, people change jobs frequently. So if you want to stay connected with someone and you want to keep your Facebook for your personal life um, and so stay connected with people on LinkedIn um, is a really great job, uh, great opportunity. So um, the disadvantages, we know that, you know, Twitter, Facebook, and maybe LinkedIn, maybe not. Was there one? There was one I thought you said was, was not blocked. Anyway. They're not accessible at Manitoba Health, um, and I'm not sure how accessible they are in the regions. Yeah, your firewall may. May or may not um, let you in or out. Um, and uh, there's, again, that blur of home versus work. You know, if you, again, if it's your Facebook or your Twitter and you're using it at home personally, um, do you want to have a personal professional account? Do you want to have two separate accounts? What do you want to do? And um, again, a disadvantage is that real need for the critical appraisal and evaluation. And again, depending on what you're doing, this might be the perfect place to be getting that sense of people's perceptions and people's reported practices. Um, the advantage is that, uh, yeah, I think we'll have to, up, before we send you the slides, I'll update my, um, my app slide. Um, but it, the information is shared in real time. And places have real uh, investment in keeping their social media current and responsive. So places often, like often if we're here at the university and one of our databases isn't working, you get a far faster response if you tweet about it publicly, like saying like, hey database, I'm having trouble. Is it just me or are you down? So often they will tweet right back and say, nope, this is a systemic issue. We're working on it, stay tuned. Whereas if you sent the same email, um, often it'll be like 36 hours and then they'll write back with the very unhelpful. We had a period of outage and, uh, you know, now it's resolved. 
Um, also that uh, these are really large, diverse networks of content and creators, which again, depending on what you're looking for, um, can be a real advantage. So uh, we are interested um, with which of these strategies sort of piqued your interest and do you think you will be giving a try? So if you just want to answer in the chat box and let us know. <laughs> oh, good. Somebody's going to try to mine it. <laughs> <laughs> Our current awareness, that's great. Browsing, excellent. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay, well, that's interesting. Um, so we are approaching almost the end of our time. So we just wanted to uh, review our spoilers, which is, you know, identify what's the right mechanism for you. Do you need to more, need do you need more news? Do you need more public opinion? Do you need more journal articles? Do you need more updates from particular associations? Do you need to hear about conferences? Like, what is it that you know that you need to know more of? Um, identify that and then figure out what's going to be the right strategy. And really, you know, um, make sure you've got that right level of sensitivity and specificity. You don't want to be getting emails every five minutes from somewhere. Um, you know, you may be able to uh, not need it in real time, you might be able to wait on a weekly or monthly basis. Um, so don't be afraid to, you know, look into the options available to setting those and evaluate, 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 critically appraise, critically appraise um, everything that's coming in. So we are available online if you've got questions. Yeah, we'll stick around for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, there was a question from earlier in the session, um, much earlier in the session, asking about whether there's a health promotion journal. Now, that's not something I know off the top of my mm -hmm. head. I don't know if Orifi would know that off the top of my head. I don't know off the top of my head, no. Um, but that's certainly something that we could look into for you yeah. if you want to just send one of us an email. You're yes, welcome. It was a packed session. Packed session. <laughs> Sorry. Well, and again, the idea was just to kind of give you, you know, get you thinking about what is it that I, I would like more of, um, or how can I streamline what I'm already dealing with, yeah. and to make sure you know about a bunch of different options. Yeah. And I am going to add one more note just about the, the Google updates, which I should have mentioned before, oh, yeah. but um, you can limit it to just news. You can receive news mm -hmm. updates that aren't necessarily from one newspaper, but from all news, all news. organizations. Yeah, that's a good point. OK, thanks so much for coming. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we'll just maybe well, mute ourselves now. Yeah, we'll, and, but we'll be here and unmute for questions yeah. if necessary.
Well, and I know. Uh, okay, we're going to sign off. And uh, we will hopefully see you again next week for our Googling for Good Evidence session. And send us a message or give us a call if you've got any questions or want to yep. follow up on anything. And we will be sending you the slides and a handout that went with this.